James Maynard's a high-flying mathematician at Oxford University with a particular interest in prime numbers. You may even remember seeing him talking enthusiastically about primes in a few of our YouTube videos. For a little while now, he's been touted as a possible winner of the Fields Medal, probably the most famous award in mathematics. Well, now he's won it. They only hand out these medals every four years, and Professor Maynard was one of the four winners named in the class of 2022. Admittedly, it's taken a little while, but I finally got in the same room as James, and, well, I asked him all about it. What does it feel like to win such a glittering prize? And by the way, this interview also exists as a video, so you can watch it on YouTube if you're so inclined. So certainly when I was in secondary school, I was aware of the concept of the Fields Medal as a sort of maths version of the Nobel Prize or something. I think the Fields Medal was the only maths prize I was aware of then. I can't remember at all when the first time I'd heard about the Fields Medal would be. But yeah, it must have been at some point when I was at school. Not Goodwill Hunting. That is, that's when I heard, first heard of it. Goodwill Hunting made the Fields Medal famous. Following you around going, the Fields Medal, the Fields Medal. <laughs> it's about my medal, is it? Oh, God, I can go home and get it for you. You can have it. Yeah, so it took me an embarrassingly long period of time to watch Goodwill Hunting, I think. So um, despite the fact I've been keen on maths for such a long time, yeah, uh, somehow everyone else seemed to have watched Goodwill Hunting, but I hadn't watched it, so I didn't learn about it from there. So you'd heard of it, but I'm assuming you couldn't have like listed winners like, you know, like FA Cup winners and stuff. It wasn't, you didn't have that kind of knowledge of it. No, so there'd be like a couple of very famous mathematicians who I would be able to name, but then it certainly wasn't the case that in the same way that I collected football stickers and things like that, I could uh, reel off a name of different Fields medalists. And you didn't dream of winning it? No, I mean, all of these things... Yeah, I guess there's like these legendary mathematicians that I very much looked up to and maybe on some level was inspired by and wanted to emulate, but it wasn't that I'd sort of had a personal goal or something to win the Fields Medal. What mathematicians did you look up to? Who, like, what, when you were young? I didn't ask you that last time we spoke about, about this type, part of your life. Yeah, I guess there's lots of different figures, but sort of in the very historical sense, like Gauss always strikes me as this sort of amazing figure in mathematics who just had this amazingly far-reaching deep vision that seemed completely disconnected with what other mathematicians knew at the time. So he was always the sort of inspirational figure who somehow really just saw depth and understood the complexities of things when these things weren't apparent at all. So I think he was maybe the sort of key inspiring figure, but then you know, lots of the other famous names and maybe more recently Sort of Grothendieck is always a big name that comes up as a sort of revolutionary figure within mathematics. And maybe it was things like Grothendieck that made me really realize that maths was a living subject. And even in more recent times, individual mathematicians could have these insights that would have profound effects on the whole of mathematics. And mathematics wasn't a static subject where people were just making small incremental advances in very technical areas. It was the case that some of the big questions and things could have big answers and people could make big strides forward. When you became a mathematician, you started working, you know, as a junior mathematician, you started hanging out with some of the big professionals. Presumably, you worked with and some of your friends included the odd fields medalist. Yeah, so I guess I ended up collaborating with Terry Tao, for example, um, when we were working on some of the polymath type projects with gap spin primes. So maybe that was the first time I had been concretely working with a fields medalist. I'd certainly met Enrico Bombieri and Timothy Gowers beforehand, so I sort of had conversations with them and knew them. But also there's a number of sort of amazing mathematicians who haven't won the Fields Medal, but you always inspired when you see someone who just has this sort of clarity of vision and understanding is always the thing that I find incredible when you see someone give a lecture or talk about something and you just, they're, the, they're talking about maybe a very complicated and technical subject, but the way they understand things suddenly makes it seem like the simplest thing in the world because they just have this clarity of vision that is incredible to watch and I always find that really inspiring. Did some of those winners have like an aura about them though? Do, do people go, oh, that, see that see that person over there? They want a Fields Medal. Like when they walk in the room, was would that be a big deal amongst mathematicians? Or I know it's hard to say. No, you've won one. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's hard to say that. Certainly, some mathematicians do have an aura about them. Part of that's their personality. Part of that's uh, the results that they've achieved. Yeah, knowing that they've won notable prizes sort of 
makes it more likely that they have an aura, but I feel an awful lot of it is also down to personalities, that some mathematicians might be absolutely incredible mathematicians, but they have the most disarming personalities, and when you actually end up talking to them, they seem like the most normal people, and you don't feel intimidated at all, whereas some other mathematicians have this sort of fearsome personality and intellectual rigour that I certainly found quite intimidating uh, as a junior mathematician. So it's well documented. We've even spoke about it. You started having some successes and making some impressive breakthroughs. And people started talking about you being a contender for the Fields Medal. I, I used to see on Reddit every time Fields Medal season came around, your name would be amongst the possible winners. Did people ever talk to you about it? Were people, did people ever say to you, James, I reckon you could win it this year, like things like that? Were you very aware of it? So maybe a couple of colleagues had loose comments uh, and so made indications that they thought it was possible. But strangely, the biggest thing was that people didn't talk about it, that normally mathematicians like to gossip a little bit about Fields Medals and things. And so in some cycles, sort of when we're just having uh, dinner or if we're having coffee or something together, people gossip about who might win a Fields Medal. But it was notable that for this cycle, no one was talking to me about the Fields Medal at all, and I seemed to be cut out of all the normal gossiping that was going on. So in terms of my interactions with colleagues, it was actually um, more them not talking to me than them talking to me that was an indication that they thought maybe I was one of the candidates. How did you find out? So I was decorating my house, so I was at the top of a ladder painting uh, one of the ceilings, and I came down to have a break and I checked my phone, and then I had an email from the IMU president saying, could we arrange a Zoom call sometime soon? And I had a suspicion then as to what it was. I was desperately trying to convince myself that he wanted me to be on some boring committee and this was nothing to get excited about at all because I didn't want to get ahead of myself. But realistically, that's when I had the first sort of inclination that maybe I'd won the Fields Medal. And then we organised this Zoom uh, call in my office. And fortunately, he was very kind and just said basically straight up, oh, we've decided to award you the Fields Medal. So it cut all the tension out pretty quickly. What was your first feeling? Do you remember what first went through your head? Obviously, I was ecstatic. Uh, the IMU president asks you, will you accept the Fields Medal? Because I guess there was this notable case with Perelman that he declined the Fields Medal. Um, so in fact, one of my first reactions was pure terror that because I was so excited, I just became paranoid that I was going to somehow blurt out that I refused the Fields Medal when obviously I wanted to accept it. So I think I had the most bizarre response to his question that I very, very slowly and deliberately said, yes, I accept the Fields Medal, which is the most surreal phrase that I think I said, because I was just completely terrified that somehow I'd been awarded the Fields Medal and I would accidentally reject the Fields Medal. <laughs> okay, well done for not rejecting it. Uh, what's the chat like then? Does he tell you, obviously he tells you some procedural things. Are you sworn to secrecy? What's the deal at this point? Yeah, they give you, um, he said that he taught me through a few of the basic procedural things, and then uh, there's a number of extra details that go through. Uh, they strongly ask you to keep it secret. Secret. They understand that you'll tell a couple of very close um, family members and maybe a couple of close colleagues, but uh, they're very, very keen to keep it as secret as possible because naturally that's part of the um, fun of all of these awards. There's obviously other people who win the Fields Medal. Do they tell you the other winners at that point, or do you not know who your sort of colleagues are at that stage? No, so I only knew for sure who the other winners were when I walked into the backstage room in Helsinki right before the Fields Medal Ceremony. I was certainly trying to sort of guess from other things, and you talk to some journalists. So I think I had heard from one of the journalists that I was the youngest Fields Medalist, because the journalists obviously know the other ones. But yeah, I only knew for sure who the other ones were when I was backstage and I recognised the other people. So when you got off that call, who did you tell? Funnily enough, th this was uh, in the early evening and I'd arranged to meet a group of mathematicians in the pub. And so I went straight off to the pub because I was already a bit late to meet them, uh, but I had to keep myself very quiet and not tell anyone. So I had this very awkward period of like socialising with some other mathematicians and just having uh, chats about different things. So they're like, why are you late, James? And you're like, oh, sorry, I was just winning a Fields Medal. <laughs> yeah, so I made up some rubbish excuse about like getting distracted and getting too into my maths and something running over. Um, and I was desperately trying to sort of not have a big beaming smile the entire time and to just talk about other things. So you didn't tell them, but 
presumably you told like parents or something or yeah so i told my partner when i got home and uh yeah then i told my parents um and a little bit later on i told a couple of sort of very close colleagues and mentors what was the family reaction what did your parents say my parents were overjoyed yeah they've uh, they're not mathematicians at all, but they've always taken a kind of great interest in following how my career has gone and things. So, yeah, I think they were super pleased. And your partner gave you the thumbs up? Yeah, she wasn't too ha too unhappy with it either. She right. was pretty pleased. Did she, did she just bring you down a peg or anything? That's sometimes your partner's job. No, no, she was super supportive. And uh, yeah, I think she was ecstatic too. So the Fields Medal is always normally given at the International Congress of Mathematicians. This was due to be held in Russia, um, in St. Petersburg. But because of the war in Ukraine, it was decided that this was not feasible for obvious reasons. And so there was a somewhat last minute switch to Helsinki. And most of the International Congress was then held online, but they had an in-person ceremony for the awarding of the Fields Medals in Helsinki along with the initial talks and the opening ceremony. You go backstage, watch some green room or something, and that's when you first see the other winners. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I'm there in my suit feeling super nervous and I go backstage and there's all the other winners and I think everyone is sort of super nervous and being a bit quiet and then Hugo Domel Coppa uh, comes in and he's exceptionally lively and he starts chatting to people and he breaks the ice and then suddenly everyone's chatting to everyone else and uh, I think that was great because it calmed my nerves an awful lot. Did you know the three others like to recognize them or? I visually recognized them yeah so I had maybe seen one or two of them before in person but I basically hadn't seen them in person and I didn't know them personally uh, but I knew who they were and I recognized them from photos I'd seen. The first uh, prize announced is for Hugo Duminil Copa from the University of Geneva and the IHES, the Institut des Hautes Supérieures. Did you know any, much about their mathematics? I knew a little bit about uh, most of their mathematics, yeah. I'd heard about some of the sort of main results that they'd had. So the next uh, awardee is Jun Ha from Princeton University. I sometimes look at these lists of four yearly winners, or these clusters, and I always think you're kind of you're 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 bonded now, aren't you? Like you're a, you're a little class. Do you feel a bond with them? I certainly feel a bit of a bond with them. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we've had any uh, extra comment. Or it's not we don't have a 2022 Fields Medalists WhatsApp group or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a certain amount of camaraderie that uh, you know. It was a very important time in my life, and they were all going through exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. So our uh, last Fields medalist is, but not least, is uh, Marina Vyasovska from EPFL. Brilliant. And what happens at the ceremony? Did you have to make a speech? Do you just take your medal and walk off a stage? How does the procedure go? Our next awardee is James Maynard from the University of Oxford. So there's the award ceremony initially, where I just take my medal. James Maynard is awarded the Fields Medal 2022 for contributions to analytic number theory, which have led to major advances in the understanding of the structure of prime numbers and in Diophantine approximation. Then there's another distinguished mathematician in the area who gives a sort of presentation on each of the winners' works. But that's all I have to do for um, that first day. And then in the second day, I give a lecture associated to winning the Fields Medal. So then you've got it. You, you know, you, you bring it home. We'll look at it in a minute, hopefully. There yeah. it is. I, I can't yeah, wait to see it. But um, like, what next? Like, it's kind of like, I know there are some other big prizes in mathematics now, like big, big prizes. But the Fields Medal still seems to be like the Nobel Prize-y one. Is there, a, is there a feeling at all of, hmm, now what? Like, that's like... That this could be the biggest thing I ever win. Yeah, it's only downhill from here. Um, I mean, I think most mathematicians are kind of really motivated by mathematics. And so I'm completely ecstatic and overjoyed that I've won the Fields Medal. Uh, but, you know, the thing that's always driven me is understanding kind of truth in mathematics and getting to the heart of kind of mathematical puzzles and things like that. 
um, and the sort of real satisfaction is from when I prove a theorem that I really like, I get this immense joy from that. And so that's still what drives me on and that's what drove me initially and that hasn't changed at all. So I hope that I can keep my feet on the ground and not get too full of myself or anything like that and to just continue being a research mathematician who's driven by trying to understand research mathematics. That um, Obviously once you've won something like the Fields Medal you become a little bit more of a public figure um, and so there's slightly more outreachy type things and public lectures and things like that that I'm asked to do and I'm very happy to do to support mathematics which I think is really important. But I like to think of myself still fundamentally as a research mathematician who's driven by the desire to make research progress on the problems that I find fascinating and really like. I can imagine it could have different effects on different people. I know the medal was created sort of as an encouragement to younger mathematicians. Do you feel like encouraged by it? Do you feel spurred on by it to do greater things and justify it? Does it put a pressure on you now when you think, gosh, the next paper I write, everyone's going to be looking at it, I'm a Fields Medalist now. Like, what effect has it had on you so far? Yeah, it's difficult to say because even a year later, I think I'm still slightly coming to terms with it and I'm not sure it's fully sunk in yet. I sort of very strongly don't want it to put too much of a pressure on me to, I think some people can fall into a trap or there's a danger to think like, now I'm a Fields Medalist, I must only produce a breakthrough level Fields Medal worthy papers and I think that's completely the wrong way to do research. So I very much want to continue publishing sort of smaller results that I would have done in the past and not to suddenly set myself on realistic standards because I think that's the best way to do really good research. I'm hoping that in some ways it doesn't change too much for me and I can uh, more or less continue at least from a research point of view as I had done before. Obviously it does give you a little bit of freedom in a certain way that now I have this recognition maybe I don't need to feel the same sorts of pressures about gaining certain metrics of recognition uh, from producing a certain number of papers a year or making sure my papers get into the best possible journal that they can do. I feel like a little bit more relaxed on that side of things which is a nice thing um, and so maybe it's inspired me to be able to explore a bit more kind of speculative projects that are longer term and aren't necessarily going to yield results in a bit more high risk. But other than that, uh, I don't think it's changed my research at all, or I'm trying to hope it doesn't change my research too much, and I'm trying to keep myself grounded and to just continue as I was originally. I certainly feel a bit of an obligation to do things to support the field of number theory and analytic number theory and mathematics more widely because I do have a little bit of an opportunity with the Fields Medal to, to introduce people who maybe otherwise wouldn't have had exposure to um, either questions to do with prime numbers or mathematics in general um, and if I can inspire other younger mathematicians to go into mathematics and to pursue these things then I think that's great. Having won this award you, there is a bit of pressure on you now to be a bit of a spokesman and uh, have, have opinions on things about mathematics. Are you ready for that? Like, are you ready to go on the radio and talk about mathematics education in British schools and things like that? Yeah, I think this has in some ways been one of the things that I personally have found most difficult that I have been asked for whether I'll sign this petition for Nobel, Pri Nobel Prize winners and Fields Medalists about this thing to do with mathematics education. And although I have an interest in mathematics education and have some opinions, I'm not really qualified to necessarily speak out on these things. Um, so I certainly find it a bit of a delicate balance about what things am I really qualified to speak about. And although I very much feel it's important to sort of help mathematics as a field, uh, it's certainly not the most natural thing for me. I think of myself fundamentally as a pure research mathematician rather than a spokesperson who's necessarily the best person to go on radio shows or to talk to journalists or things like that. There's other people, um, you know, people like Marcus de Sotoy come to mind who really have a skill for being able to communicate complicated ideas in very simple language and I think I um, try my best but I'm not as good, as, anywhere near as good as people like that. Yeah, so that's something that I've tried to strike a balance with that on the one hand it's 
important to promote mathematics, but on the other hand, uh, I'm not always the most qualified person to do this, and uh, this isn't what I see my sort of fundamental day job as. So I'm trying to strike a balance, and I'm probably still learning my way through all of that. Because you must be aware you just coincidentally happen to have won the Fields Medal at a time that the UK has a Prime Minister that decided to start talking a lot about mathematics and the importance of mathematics. So it was on the front page for a little while and he started talking about UK needs to up its maths game. Did you start thinking, uh-oh, I'm going to get some phone calls now? Yeah, so there were um, a couple of statements I gave uh, related to things like that. And I think it's really great that maths does have a little bit more impetus behind it maybe now and uh, I think maths is really important both as a sort of pure academic subject but also for the wider economy and things maths has an empirical fact that it pays itself off so many times over and so I think it is really important to um, communicate this to people about how this subject that maybe appears old and very obscure and abstract um, actually really does have very important implications for the real world as well as being a beautiful subject in and of itself. But yeah, it's suddenly this sort of slightly political realm uh, is one that I do not feel necessarily comfortable in or at home at. So all of that sort of thing uh, is a little bit of a learning experience for me. Lots of people go through the maths education system, particularly in the UK, and come out with a very funny idea of what maths really is, I think, that's often very negative. And so you hear lots of people say they really hated maths at school. And so um, I find this really disappointing because obviously I love maths, but also I think that there's lots and lots of fun in maths and you don't have to be um, a brilliant research mathematician to be able to discover the fun in maths and to be able to uh, see some of the beauty and the enjoyment in maths. And so I certainly do think there's some opportunities to have maybe a slight different shift in focus to show some of these fun ideas about maths and the kind of mathematical thinking that's very important for lots of real world applications. More number file videos in school? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Let me come back to quickly to the Fields Medal. Can you tell us about the age rules with the Fields Medal and where you stand on that? Because I talk to my friends about the Fields Medal sometimes and, exp and they like, find it interesting. And then when I tell them about, and sometimes they've heard of it, but when I tell them about the age thing, they're really surprised. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the Fields Medal is only awarded once every four years, and it's only awarded to mathematicians who are under the age of 40. So it's very much only given to young mathematicians. Uh, I think originally this was intended to be a prize for uh, promising young mathematicians as an encouragement, but just for historical reasons, the people who've won it has led to it becoming a much more prestigious award than maybe it was ever originally intended to be. And so there's now this odd status that one, at least one of the very premier prizes in mathematics has this very young age limit. And so it's really only given to young mathematicians where something like the Nobel Prize in the sciences is normally given to people right at the end of their careers for a body of distinguished work over the whole period of time. Was this your last chance or did you have one more window? So I did have one more window that I'm 35 now and so I would be eligible again in four years time. But you can only win one, win one Fields Medal, I think that's in the rules, so there's no chance of me winning it a second time. I'm curious about what you think about that age limit. Yeah, I feel that there's obvious benefits and disadvantages that on some level I sometimes find it a little bit dissatisfying that Nobel Prizes are given to people really right at the end of their career. Often they've been retired for a long period of time. And so it's not ex selecting the sort of most exciting work and the people who you're expecting to come up with the next breakthroughs. And that's one nice thing about the Fields Medal, that it is uh, choosing very promising and talented young mathematicians and people who are therefore maybe uh, amongst the people who might be making the next set of breakthroughs. You can, um, and you can use the benefit of it, some of those little doors it opens and advantages it gives you, you can use while you're still practicing. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that's certainly one benefit of uh, the Fields Medal. Obviously a big disadvantage is that the relatively low age limit has a certain distorting effect that different education systems uh, accelerate people to different extents. And so uh, a 40 year cutoff is quite arbitrary. People who have to do military service at disadvantages, uh, people who maybe 
take career breaks because of caring responsibilities or having children or things like that. Um, it sort of slightly unfairly disadvantages. The fact that it's just once every four years with this age limit means that what year you're born mod four has a advantage as to whether you have more possible research time to make contributions or not. Um, so it has lots of sort of slightly undesirable effects like this as well. Yeah, if you solve the Riemann hypothesis as a 41 year old, too bad. Yeah, exactly. But if you'd somehow just been born one year earlier, then uh, everything would have been fine. Can I please see the medal? You can be. <laughs> so this is my medal. It comes in that case, does it? Yeah, it came in this case. What was it like when they handed it to you? Was it, what did that feel like? I mean, I think I was in a daze the entire time uh, through the ceremony. So um, everything felt amazing and I was just on cloud nine, but I was also slightly unaware of everything that was going on. Did any of your family come over to Helsinki? No, so the strange thing was that I was uh, awarded my medal on the 5th of July, uh, but my first son was going to be born on the 7th of July. So I received the medal on the 5th. On the morning of the 6th, I gave my talk associated to the Fields Medal. Normally they give the talks in alphabetical order, but they changed the order because I needed to get back to the UK from Finland. Uh, and I flew straight back to the UK um, after giving the first talk in the morning. And then in the morning of the 7th of July, my first son was born. So that was a, it's going to be difficult to top that week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And th the last question I have is, what do you do with it? Like, where, like, what do you do with the medal? Do you ever look at it? Does it have pride of place? Is it locked in a safe or like, you know, as much as you can tell us? Yeah, so this is one of the slightly disappointing things, I guess, that because it is sort of valuable, both sentimentally, but also uh, I think the medal itself is gold and so has uh, some value, value, I sort of have it locked in a box at home, which means I don't actually see it very often. It's just sort of locked in a cupboard somewhere. And so in some ways, it's a bit silly that I win this medal that I'm super proud of, I really like, but rather than show it off or look at it, it just gets put in a cupboard. Do you ever get it out? Like, does anyone ever ask to see it besides me? Yeah, occasionally if a sort of uh, mathematician comes around for dinner or something, I'll get it out to show them and things. Because, yeah, I think lots of people like to sort of touch and feel it. That's all for now. Check out the show notes for more links, including a playlist of interviews we've done with other winners of the Fields Medal. And more interviews with James Maynard, of course. And by the way, I'll also link to details about the other winners of the Fields Medal in 2022, so you can read about them. There were three others, of course. I'm Brady Harron, and you've been listening to the Number File Podcast. <laughs>